Guys, that is so awesome. Oh man, I love this thing. Guys, I am so excited because what I have in front of me is what I hope to be the future of all smartphones going forward. In front of me is the Xperia Pro I. And for those of you who have been paying attention, Linus did a short circuit on the Xperia 1 Mark III about three or four months ago. And that phone is really similar to this one with one key distinction, the Pro I name. And why is it called the Pro I? Well, the I stands for imaging, which is why I'm here about to unbox this because this phone is Sony's first phone and one of the first phones in the world with a one inch sensor. Yes, this phone behind this camera bump is a one inch sensor. I, I can't even describe to you when I first read the article rumoring this phone, saying that they had put a one inch sensor and from the RX100 Mark 7, no less, the same sensor in the RX100 Mark 7 is in this phone, in a phone. So you might be asking, what is a one inch sensor? Brandon, I have no idea what you're talking about. Why does this matter? Well, if you've ever watched a camera video, but even if you haven't, you'll probably understand that a larger sensor in a camera is generally better, better low light, better dynamic range, there's lots of reasons that in terms of performance that it is better. So the fact that they took a one inch sensor, which is much larger than the typical smartphone sensor and put it into a phone that is also like as thin as a flagship smartphone would be, guys, this is a really big deal because nothing like this has really existed. Even the iPhone doesn't have a one inch sensor. Okay, but before I get ahead of myself, let's look at the phone physically. On the front, we've got a 6.5 inch OLED display. Love to see that. On the right, we've got a volume rocker, power button, which doubles as a fingerprint sensor, and two shortcut buttons. One for the Videography Pro app, which has this fancy animation when it launches, um, and then the camera. If you look really closely, the shutter button on the camera is actually knurled, kind of like a shutter button on other cameras. Just to give you that like tactile, okay, this is my shutter button for my camera feel. Also, it makes it easy to know that that's the shortcut button that you're gonna press for your camera. So you just have to hold it, camera opens really quickly and you're ready to go. On the left of the phone, we've got a toolless SIM and micro SD card slot. So you can run a micro SD expansion or dual SIM. Love to see that. And then there's a little eyelet for a like wrist strap if you wanna have that extra like security, just kind of like a pocket camera would be honestly. And the device itself feels very, very nice. Almost forgot, on the top, we have a headphone jack. Love to see that because it is now becoming a feature. <laughs> and then on the back, of course, we've got our three cameras, the 50 millimeter telephoto, which on our pre-production sample is unfortunately disabled but that's okay. We've got two other cameras to try. The 24 mil with the one inch sensor and then a 16 millimeter wide. So that's three cameras on a phone that has a one inch sensor and is still, again, the size, the camera bump's not even that bad. Like it's really not that, it, I have an iPhone here and I'd say, I take this case off. I'd say the bump on the iPhone might even be slightly more. And then I also actually have a Pixel 6 Pro here. The bump on the Pixel 6 Pro. That's not a bump. <laughs> <laughs> the bump on the Pixel 6 Pro is uh, quite a bit more significant. A couple more things about the camera on this phone is the aperture is actually mechanical. So you can go from F2 to F4. There's a little like thin aperture blade thing in this camera and it can actually change from one to the other, which is again, in this form factor, really cool. Cause that gives you more control over your depth of field, which is typically something you can't really do on a smartphone or else they do it kind of with, you know, computational photography. So Sony has made a couple apps on here specifically for video and photo, because this thing can also do 4K 120 FPS, just like something bigger like the A. Oh wait, this can't even do 4K 120 FPS. One of their new apps is the Videography Pro, which is supposed to be, because they also released the Cinema Pro on the other Xperia's that they've launched, but apparently 
they tried to simplify the process and make it a little bit easier to use for different users. And so let's take a look at the Video Pro app. But first, we gotta thank our sponsor, Altium. Thanks to Altium for sponsoring today's video. Altium Designer enables engineers to connect with every facet of the electronics design process. It's intuitive, you can interact in a 3D environment, and it features interactive routing. They've even got Altium 365, which allows multiple people to work on the same project at once. Get a free trial of Altium Designer Viewer for a limited time at the link below. <laughs> when the device temperature becomes high, the following icon will be displayed. Do not hold the device directly in your hand while this icon is displayed. Doing so may result in burns. <laughs> oh, I mean, again, I guess that's understandable. <laughs> it's a one inch sensor on a very thin phone. Cooling will probably be an issue. It's not active cooling as far as I know. So yeah, this thing's gonna get hot. And that's, that. we'll see how this goes. Let's see, we got manual focus and autofocus. Oh, so manual, whoa. That's so cool. And then if you wanna do wide, can you change the lens in this mode? Oh, my, they might be locked on the 24. Oh, you can do telly. Oh, you can like zoom in. Kind of like on a broadcast camera. It's got like that power I zoom. It's not disabled anymore. Well, no, it, I think this is digital zoom from the oh. looks of it. And then if you do auto off, you can just change your shutter speed like a normal camera. Andy. Wow. Look at this. I'm setting my iPhone. <laughs> and it's it's a pretty easy, simple view. You got a giant record button here, and then you just go. Let me see if this videography pro button works. Oh, that's, so that still brings us to the mode. So you have to hit the record button on the display. Okay. They probably intend you to use their grip because Sony actually is going to sell a vlogging kit to go along with this phone. And it actually comes with a front facing monitor that you can connect to the, to the phone and a microphone on the top. And then it uses their Bluetooth um, tripod handle thing that I've shown in the past. And honestly, the vlogging kit, here's some images of it. Like it looks pretty cool. Jono just asked me how much this phone costs because I've been nerding out about how awesome it is and all these features. Unfortunately, it is not cheap. This phone goes for $17.99 USD. Guys, think of the technology though. $17.99, yes, incredibly expensive, but you get so much for that. You get a camera that is also a phone, but more camera than a phone, to be honest. So in <laughs> Cinema Pro, I have, ah, so I have frame rate here, 24 FPS or 120. Audio function is not available, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna have to properly try that 120 in a minute here. Um, you've also got different looks. We've got Venice, color science. Bright, opaque, warm, strong. Whoa, these are drastic. They're also flat though. Oh, so you can use both lenses in the Cinema Pro app. Nice, okay. Probably wanna to stick to the 2400. White balance, you can set auto or custom. And then if you hit record, it just goes in on your screen. And then you can change your focus from here. Oh, you can like rack focus mid shot. That's so cool. And then, oh, you can set, you can reset your A, B, and then you can do Andy. This thing can do a one button focus pull for you. Wow, that's easy. I'm pretty impressed with this app. It is very, very intuitive to use, especially if you've ever used a camera before, like any of Sony's cameras. Okay, but before we start doing test clips, I wanna try one more thing. I wanna try their photography. Full disclosure, I've actually been using this phone for about two days, and I've tried the photography app a decent amount, and it is, again, pretty good. On the right of the display, you've got all these controls, that you'd want on a camera. This is like their the quick settings in a Sony camera, but on the right of your display. And then you have a couple different modes. You've got basic, which is just, which changes that. But if you, as soon as you go to auto, gives you that like more camera alpha series view. And then of course, you've got program, shutter speed priority, manual, and then memory recall. So once I go to manual, I've got my shutter speed here, my aperture, is right here, two to four. See that? That's mechanical. So if you guys look really closely at this lens, you can see the mechanical shutter or the mechanical aperture in action. There's F2, here's F4. There's F2, here's F4. F2, F4. Guys, that is so awesome. 
you can actually see it working. That is, oh man, I love this thing. But let's actually do some test shots. Um, let me grab a couple things and we can try. I have a tiny scene here of these three Funko Pops talking about how they're gonna kill Lucky the Dragon. Oh man, that actually, again, I have to look at this on a computer, but from the OLED display on this phone, this looks really good. Even just this focus feature, the fact that I can rack to Lucky and then rack to these guys as if I was using a real camera. Oh man, that is awesome. And yes, of course there are phones that give you manual focus adjustments and you can do them on other smartphones. But on this phone, it feels so natural as if it was like a real camera. And then you can look at the depth of field from here, just to my background. Lucky's not even that far away. He's just on that part of the table, but he is very naturally and nicely out of focus in this clip. So that's the Videography Pro recording clip. I wanna try this on the Cinema Pro. Footage off of the Cinema Pro app is supposed to be processed in post color wise, but just for comparison, I'm gonna record a clip on this as well. You can see it's a much flatter profile. I just love how easy this is to rack focus and it's so natural looking, at least on the phone. I have to look at it on the computer, but there's Andy, back to our huddle. And then to Lucky, this is so easy. Okay, here's just a quick and dirty test of the 120 FPS. I keep getting thrown off with the Xperia because the, the shutter button is a physical button, not just like a tap on the screen. Andy just asked if I can half press and get focus and you sure, you bet I can. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to tell from the phone displays alone, but first impressions on the phone display, the Xperia looks pretty good, but then so does the iPhone and so does the Pixel. I'm gonna let you guys be the judge. Here's the three photos. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But I'm not sure yet which one I think is the best. Just taking a quick look at the photos that we did of Lucky, the iPhone, you can see, did a pretty good job in terms of like detail, and the lens doesn't look like it has a lot of fringing on the edges of Lucky here. And then on the Pixel, we actually see a quite a bit more fringing on the top of his head. It's present on the Xperia a little bit, but really not that bad. Funny aside, I actually got so excited about this phone, I forgot to look at what was in the rest of the box. <laughs> so I'm gonna reopen the box. We've got a Sony 30 watt charger and a Sony Type-C cable. So I didn't miss much. Honestly, unfortunately, that is all the time we really have for this phone. If you want a deeper video, maybe comparing these three phones and a couple others cameras, let me know in the comments down below. Cause we like, there's things we didn't even get to. We didn't even get to the fact that you can use this phone as a monitor if you have something like an A7 IV or a ZV-E10, which is super cool because it's like a 6.5 inch OLED monitor. And the last thing you guys might be asking is who is this phone for? Because it's $17.99. Well, it's for the type of person who already has a Sony camera and wants a phone that is almost as good or maybe better in certain scenarios as their RX series portable compact travel camera and instead of having like that separate travel camera, you can just have your phone and your professional camera with you at all times, instead of carrying two cameras for two different purposes. I gotta say, I want one of these because it is super, super cool. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and please subscribe to Short Circuit.